So we know in general that ecosystems support human health and make us healthier. Um, purifying water, providing recreation, re um, uh, regulating disease vectors, things like that. What we're not as good at is understanding specifically how a change in an ecosystem will lead to a specific measurable change in health outcomes. So we know this stuff in general, we think it's true, but we're not very good at actually showing the marginal benefits of ecosystem change on human health. And this project is about doing that using uh, big data approaches. So the specific question among many we could choose uh, is linking watersheds and waterborne disease. Specifically, how does watershed disturbance upstream affect downstream diarrheal disease among children? So diarrhea is the world's number one killer of kids. It kills more children every year than measles and malaria and AIDS combined. So it's a huge human health issue and it has really direct ties to the condition of watersheds upstream and therefore the water quality in those watersheds. So we're going to approach this, like I said, in a big data way by using a set of surveys USAID has been collecting for 30 years called the DHS system. So these are all red dots of where they've done surveys of households over the years. Um, our data set cleaned up from this has about 800,000 children in it from 49 countries. And we know a lot about these people. We know health outcomes, social factors, sanitation factors. We've also added to the database environmental variables like natural features and watershed condition crucial to this project. Uh, how much tree cover or human activity is in the watershed drawn specifically above each household. Okay, so this is the model we want to test or understand. We want to understand how ecosystem changes lead to changes in health risk factors and ultimately to health outcomes that we can measure in populations by going through these yellow mediating factors. These are things that might insulate people from getting sick even if they're exposed to risk. So in this case, we want to take data on upstream human activity and tree cover and connect it through water quality, which we don't have data for, on diarrhea incidents in children. But we're spending a lot of time on these mediating factors, other things that might um, make a child less likely to get disease, age, wealth, education, and, and infrastructure in their house. Okay, so these are the variables we've pulled from this data set to relate to each other using all the ones in black to predict that one on the right, diarrhea. And here's the answer. So here's the sort of one and only result slide that I'll walk you through. Each of these blue squares is the effect of each variable on the probability of a child getting diarrhea. And if it's to the right of that red line, that variable increases the risk of diarrhea as it's increasing. If it's to the left, it does the opposite. It decreases the risk of diarrhea if it's increasing. So getting older helps. Being rich helps. More educated helps. Those are those confounding mitigating factors. But what I want you to look at is the bottom two. That's the natural capital. Human activity upstream, the more we have, the more the probability of diarrhea. Tree cover upstream or forest cover reduces the risk of diarrhea. Right? So this is a signal across all these countries and all these kids and all these cultures that the way you treat your watershed has real and measurable impacts on human health. So these are the take-homes from this study. One is watershed condition affects human health. Even after we control statistically and carefully for all these other things that we know matter, like what the infrastructure is in their house, where they get their water, how old they are, and so forth, we can still find that how we treat our watersheds has a health impact. We also find a stronger signal for the most vulnerable kids. Rural kids and poor kids from the households that are in the bottom 20% of income depend much more directly on nature, have a stronger signal than urban or uh, the wealthiest children, right? So this is a relationship that's most important for the most vulnerable households. And lastly, that nature investments, because these things are true, can also be seen as public health investments. And we're working with Brendan and lots of other people at the gun with World Wildlife Fund and USAID to make their uh, conservation investments in ways that can maximize human health and conversely make their development investments in ways that can maximize conservation outcomes. Thanks very much.